So now I am calculating the total load equivalent load, which is a short circuit plus wind whole square plus uh, wind uh, loading plus ice loading whole square. Conductor, sorry, conductor weight plus ice loading whole square to the power of root 2. This will give me the total force acting on that conductor. After getting the total force of Ft, I am calculating the span or support space. Here, this Ft I am using here. Apart from this Ft, this span is also depends upon some other factors like one is the fiber stress on that conductor. Suppose for a copper, that FV, FV will be 13.8, some formulas are there, some values are there. This is given in that IEC 865. And it also depends upon the some factor like uh, multiplying factor, XSM, XSC, which is again depending upon the like the conductor, whether the conductor is fixed at both ends, fixed at one end and simply supported at one end. So these some conditions are there. So based on that, the XM, uh, uh, KSM, KSC, KDM, and KDE are there. So these are some values, multiplying factors. Based on this, I am calculating the span now. Suppose now the span came to 4 meters. My assumption is 2 meters, so it won't be work. So I have to go for minimum 4 meters spacing them. So that is about the span. So after that span, I am calculating the what is the maximum vertical conductor deflection on this? How much? What is the means? The generally we are having a support spacing right? So what is the deflection for that? So that will again depends upon the your loadings. What loadings directly from the top now? Deflection then what is the deflection from the top? It is right. So obviously here it will only the wind loading and the conductor weight will come. Other the short circuit forces or wind forces will not be there. It is directly from the top. And again, it depends upon the one more factor, a modulus of el el elasticity. And the factors of KDM, that again depends upon the how you connected the conductor. Whether fixed at both ends, fixed at one end, support one end, both sides are only support, or it depends upon that. So after calculating the deflection, we are going to calculate the cantilever strength. So the cantilever strength will uh, be calculated. This, the weight, how much acting on that one. It's again, this is a formula where LS is a one half of the sum of the lengths of the two adjacent conductor spans. Like, so this is the conductor span. This is the one you have to calculate for this one. And for this, this one. That's you can give the cantilever strength. Now you have to select that insulator, that cali uh, that that's calculated the, the calculated one, suppose you got 70 kilo newtons, then you have to cal you have to select the conductor, uh, sorry, select the insulator that should have insulate that should have a cantilever strength greater than this. And the next one is thermal expansion. In the thermal expansion, I am calculating the conductor expansion. It depends upon the coefficient of linear expansion. For aluminum, uh, there is some value of this. And the initial length of the conductor length, everything. And temperature variation. What is the final temperature minus temperature? Means final temperature again, go to the conductor class. How much current you are injecting into this? That will give you the final conductor temperature, like 200 degrees per copper and aluminum. That is the case. So we are calculating the thermal expansion. And based on this, we are placing, uh, based on this, we are also placing the couplers. The couplers generally uh, placed based on this uh, uh, fine of uh, rule. Generally, it's a kind of a support. It's kind of a support. I will talk when I'm explaining about the uh, example. And alien, uh, alien uh, conductor vibration is primarily the result of standard low velocity transfer winds striking the conductor and causing it to vibrate, may vibrate. Generally, when a frequency of this driving force wind is approximately equal to the natural frequency of the bus span, if the both frequencies are, we know that a resonance occurs. This will result the conductor, uh, the, this may result to conductor damage. 
So vibrations will occur in most of all the bus spans, independently of the conductor material, diameter or length. So in short spans, the vibrations are usually of small enough magnitude to be neglected. However, in the spans, if the span is more than 6 meters, generally vibration dampers should be considered. It's a kind of a some thing, additional one, alien conductor vibration. So this by this you are concluding that you are designed you designed the rigid bus bar size. Forget about all the formula still. Just to, uh, see the flow of we are doing and what are the things what are the factors influencing on this. If I am if I am again explaining you this, I am telling that in a brief. The rigid bus bar sizing the rigid bus bar. The calculation of the rigid bus bar depends upon factors. One is first we are calculating the first we have to know where the bus location is uh, coming because it's totally depends upon the layout orientation. The what we discussed uh, that will be discussed in our next classes. And the second one is uh, I have to also consider what is the maximum, what is the uh, future expansion of this uh, bus bar and. From this future expansion itself, I will come to know that what is the maximum current carrying capacity required for this bus bar. Not only extension of the length of the uh, conductor, with the future expansion, I will come to know that at present the, the bus is carrying only 100 amps. But maybe in future, by addition of two base, it may carry 140 amps. So I have to design that bus bar for 140 amps. So the conductor selection will also depends upon the future expansion. So before attending to this, you have to finalize whether there is a future expansion for this pro for this bus or not. So after finalizing this, I am ca I am calculating the conductor sizing, conductor selection. So conductor selection here I am doing the rigid bus bar. So I am selecting the aluminium tube pipe. Uh, we are having two types. One is a schedule 40, schedule 80 pipes. I will show you. Uh, I'm having that data. I will show you that. So I am calculating the uh, minimum area required to carry a such uh, short circuit current and uh, some thermal short circuit stand capabilities as well as the rated current. So based on this, I am calculating the conductor selection. So I finalize it. Suppose a four inch of conductor one. Now I have to implement, I have to erect that four inch aluminum pipe on the site, which is for suppose a 20 meter length of the uh, pipe I, I have to install. So for this 20 meters of the pipe, for this 20 meters of the pipe, at present I am assuming for R phase, Y phase and B phase, at present I am assuming that the spacing between the, uh, between the supports at present, I am assuming as 3 meters. With 3 meters apart, a support I am assuming. And I am calculating that. What would be the short circuit forces acting on the uh, on these conductors, which is a, one of the kind of a load on this conductor, the short circuit forces. And also, if my system is, uh, is it uh, wind ice loading areas, so I have to calculate the ice loadings and depends upon the uh, and uh, wind, wind loadings also I have to calculate. So all these forces, I am uh, finding the equivalent or resultant force which is acting on this one. So based on this resultant force and some other uh, factors or some other uh, factors like uh, fiber stress of this uh, conductor and uh, multiplying factors which are depending on the whether the conductors are fixed or fixed on both ends or just a supported or where one fixed one support based on this some multiplication factors are there so by considering those multiplying factors i am fine i am concluding the what is the minimum span required for my between the two structures suppose if my minimum span required is two meters Hence, before I selected uh, three meters, hence the uh, selected one is more than the uh, required one. So I can keep this, this 
or else you can uh, reduce this span of protein. 